Let's take a look at objects that spin about a fixed axis and how we can solve for unknown forces. Let's say we have a blob like this. We can attach a pin to it at the bottom like this. Let's label it O and while we're at it, let's apply some random forces to our object. The center of mass of this object is right here. We see that when it starts to move, the center of mass is moving in a curvilinear path. Since it's going through curvilinear motion, the acceleration at g can be broken into normal and tangential components. Remember, normal acceleration points towards the center of the curve, while tangential acceleration points straight ahead, in other words, tangent to the path. Previously, we talked about adding forces in the x and y axes. This time, we can use the normal and tangential axes and write our equations of motion like this. So to recap, we can find normal acceleration by multiplying the angular velocity squared times the distance from point O to the center of mass. And we can find tangential acceleration by multiplying the angular acceleration by the distance from point O to the center of mass. We can also figure out the moment about the center of mass using this equation. It says the sum of moments about the center of mass is equal to the mass moment of inertia of the object at the center times the angular acceleration. Let's say, however, we don't want to find the moment about the center of mass. Instead, we want to figure it out about a random point. For example, we want to figure out the moment about point O. The equation for it can be written like this, but the easiest way to understand it is to use a kinetic diagram. Using our blob as an example, I will explain what a kinetic diagram is. In a kinetic diagram, we draw mass times acceleration vectors at the center of mass. In simple terms, we show the mass times acceleration that occurs due to the sum of all the external forces that's affecting the object. We also show the moment created about the center of mass, which is the mass moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. You can think of it as a visual representation of F equals MA. When we calculate the moment at point O, we use the free body diagram for the left side of the equation and the kinetic diagram for the right side of the equation. All of this will make a lot more sense when we go through examples. We'll cover each question step by step and by the end, you should be able to solve the problems you will face. One last thing, to do some questions, you need to remember the formulas for mass moment of inertia of different objects. I show some here, but you can find many more online by searching for it. Now let's move on to some examples. Let's take a look at this problem where we need to find the initial angular acceleration and the reactions at pin A. So we see that when the square plate is released, it falls down and turns clockwise. Let's draw a free body diagram along with the kinetic diagram. The center of mass will be at the center of this plate, since it's a uniform square plate. At the center, we have the weight. We also have two reactions at the pin, which will be AX and AY. For the kinetic diagram, we have to think about how this plate moves. We know that the plate moves in a circular path, so the acceleration at the center of mass would have two components. We have the normal acceleration, which would be towards the center of the curve, and we have the tangential acceleration, which is straight ahead, tangent to the curve. The vectors we drew shows each component of acceleration multiplied by the mass of the plate. Lastly, we have the moment created about the center of mass. So first, Let's calculate these acceleration forces. The normal acceleration is angular velocity squared times the distance from pin A to the center of mass. The plate starts from rest, which means angular velocity will be zero. That means the normal acceleration is also zero. For the tangential acceleration, it's the angular acceleration multiplied by the distance from pin A to the center of mass. The distance to the center of mass can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. So we can write our tangential acceleration like this. The moment created about the center of mass can be found by multiplying the mass moment of inertia of the plate by the angular acceleration. So let's find the mass moment of inertia. This is where the formulas come in handy. So we will use the formula for a uniform square plate. The mass is 24 kilograms and the sides are of equal length which are 0.5 meters. Let's solve. To figure out the angular acceleration, all we need to do is write a moment equation about point A. So for that, remember the equation we talked about, which is this. We will pick clockwise to be positive. So when we write our moment equation, or an equation of motion, we use both the free body diagram and the kinetic diagram. So let's go through this equation. 
On the left side, we have the only force creating a moment about point A, which is weight multiplied by the perpendicular distance to point A from the center of mass. Remember, since we are writing the moment about point A, AX and AY are not considered because they go through the line of action. On the other side, we use the kinetic diagram. What we are saying is that each of the mass times acceleration vectors at the center cause a moment about point A. So we have the mass of the plate multiplied by the tangential acceleration multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the center to point A. Notice that we also have a moment about the center of mass in our kinetic diagram. We need to add that as well, which is mass moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. We can now solve for angular acceleration. Using this value, we can find the tangential acceleration. Now we can move on to equations of motion for the x and y axis. First, for the x axis. So on the left side, the only force we have is the x component of the reaction at pin A. On the other side, we have mass multiplied by the x component of the tangential acceleration. Remember that we found the normal acceleration to be zero, so we don't need to worry about it. Let's solve, which gives us AX. Notice once again that we used the free body diagram for the left side of the equation, while the kinetic diagram was used for the right side. Now we can write another equation for the y component forces. So we have the y component of reaction at pin A, and then we have the weight. On the other side of the equation, we have mass times the y component of the tangential acceleration. Solving gives us AY. Those are our answers. Let's take a look at this question where we need to find the acceleration of block A. The first step is to draw a free body diagram along with the kinetic diagram. So we have the tension at O, the weight of each of the blocks, along with the weight of the pulley itself. For the kinetic diagram, we have the moment created about point O and the mass times accelerations of block A and B. We know that the acceleration of the pulley is equal to the angular acceleration multiplied by the radius of the pulley. So let's isolate for the angular acceleration. Now we need to find the mass moment of inertia of the pulley above the center. Since the pulley can be treated as a disc, the equation to find the mass moment of inertia is this. Let's plug in the mass of the pulley and the radius. Solving gives us the mass moment of inertia. Now we can write just one moment equation about point O and figure out the acceleration. We will pick clockwise to be positive. Let's go through this equation. On the left side, we have the weight of each of the blocks multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the block to the center of the pulley. Notice how block A creates a negative moment about point O since it would make the pulley spin counterclockwise while block B would create a positive moment. Moving on to the other side, we have the mass times accelerations of each of the blocks multiplied by the perpendicular distance to point O. Don't forget, we also have a moment about point O which is the mass moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. But remember, we already found angular acceleration in terms of acceleration. Let's solve for A, which is our answer. Let's take a look at this problem where we have a spinning disc and when we place it on the ground, we need to figure out how long it would take to stop. We also need to figure out the horizontal and vertical forces about point A. We will solve for the time to stop first and then proceed to figure out the reactions at point A. Let's draw a free body diagram. Weight will be at the center, the normal force will be at the point of contact, and friction would point to the right since the wheel is spinning clockwise. The other force we need to consider is with respect to member AB. At the point where it's connected to the wheel, which is at point B, the force would not be straight down, but rather it would follow a position vector from A to B. In other words, the force vector FAB would point towards point A. Let's also draw the angular acceleration. Remember, the wheel is slowing down, which means the angular acceleration, or rather angular deceleration, would be opposite to the way the wheel is spinning. Now that we have our free body diagram, let's figure out the mass moment of inertia of the disc about point B. For that, we can use this equation. So the mass is 30 kilograms and the radius is 0.3 meters. Solving gives us the mass moment of inertia. Also, the frictional force is the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force at C, which we can write like this. Now, let's start off by writing our equations of motion for the x-axis forces. So on the left side, we have the frictional force and the x-component of force FAB. 
On the other side, we have mass times acceleration in the x direction, but the wheel doesn't translate left or right, so acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero. Now let's write another equation for the vertical forces. We have the normal force, the weight, and the y component of force FAB. On the other side, we have mass times the vertical acceleration, but that's zero since the wheel doesn't move up or down. We now have two equations with two unknowns, so let's solve them. We get the normal force and force FAB. Now that we have the normal force, we can figure out the frictional force at C. So let's plug in the values. Now we can calculate the moment about point B. We don't need a kinetic diagram since we're calculating the moment about the center of mass, and the equation is simple. We will pick counterclockwise to be positive. So we have the frictional force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from point C to B. Every other force goes through the line of action and we don't need to worry about them. On the other side, we have the mass moment of inertia we found earlier multiplied by the angular acceleration. Let's solve. Okay, now we need to use this acceleration to find the time for the wheel to stop. Since it's a constant acceleration, we can use this equation to figure out the time for the wheel to stop. This equation should be familiar to you. If not, please see the description for rigid bodies and rotation about a fixed axis. So the final angular velocity is 0 rads per second, the initial angular velocity is 125 rads per second, and we have the acceleration we just found. It's negative because we picked clockwise movement to be positive for this equation. Let's solve for t. Now we can move on to the other part of the question, which is to find the reactions at point A. Let's draw a free body diagram of pin A. We have the force FB, which is now going towards the center of the wheel, and we have the horizontal and vertical components at A. One thing to note here is that this pin does not move, which means instead of writing an equation of motion, we're actually going to write an equation of equilibrium. All it means is that the forces added together at point A would be equal to zero since it's not moving. So let's start with the horizontal forces. So we have the x component of force FAB and the reaction AX. Let's solve. Now for the vertical forces. Pretty much the same as before, we're just considering the y component of force FAB. Solving gives us AY. Those are our answers. That should cover the types of problems you will face. It's incredibly helpful to draw free body diagrams and kinetic diagrams for all the questions. I hope this video helped you. Thanks for watching and best of luck with your studies.